Chronicles of a Death Foretold is a story of a Colombian town about the murder of Santiago Nassar. To briefly summarize, a man named Bayardo San Ramon asks for Angela Vicario's hand in marriage, though she does not feel any affection for him in return. Regardless of this, through Bayardo's high prestige and wealth, he essentially is able to buy Angela from the Vicario family, going as far as buying a house for her. All is well until the wedding night, when Bayardo learns that Angela is not a virgin. He returns her to her family, who are all collectively furious with her. When asked who had taken her virginity, Angela tells him that it was Santiago Nassar, and they decide they must kill him in order to restore honor to the Barcario family. After drunkenly traipsing about the town the day after the wedding, the twins find Santiago and kill him with a steak knife. The brothers are convicted with a relatively short jail sentence for murder with a legitimate defense of honor. The interesting thing about the book is that it's told out of order. This is ironic because it's titled Chronicles of a Death Foretold, and yet the story isn't told in chronological order. Irony can also be found within the story itself. An irony is present in the culture of the town, which obscures the finer points of Christianity to the end of ignoring its staple principles, causing characters to act in manners which would otherwise be considered irrational, on the underlying basis of their religious beliefs. The author, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, conveys this brilliantly, by hinting at the strong negative impact religion has on the society, without the narrator ever explicitly criticizing it himself. First, let's look at the effect religion has on the characters in this book. The word bishop is mentioned numerous times in the first chapter of the book. It was very clear that there was a huge buzz over the bishop's visit to the town, one which was extremely short-lived at that. The narrator recalls, There were a lot of people at the dock in addition to the authorities and the schoolchildren, and everywhere one could see the crates of well-fattened roosters they were bearing as a gift for the bishop, because coxcomb was his favorite dish. Obviously, this town took religion very seriously. We see later in the story how religion affects the narrative. As the narrator describes the history of the Arabs in the town, he states that they were clannish, hard-working, and Catholic. This description shows that, for the most of the people in the town, religion is a character trait as important as sociability and work ethic. All right, but how does religion affect the characters in the story other than the narrator? Let's talk about honor and what it means for the characters in Chronicles. In most religions, including Christianity, it is a sin to do the do before marriage. Upon the discovery that Anhala had committed this sin, her entire family considered themselves dishonored. To be dishonored, then, means to look bad in the eyes of God, or in this case to be burdened by a sin committed by a loved one. This is made evident when the twins justify their action at the beginning of chapter 3. We killed him openly, Pedro Bacario said, but we're innocent. Perhaps before God, said Father Amador. Before God and before men, Pablo Bacario said. It was a matter of honor. Now, I'll get to before men in a moment, but it's very clear that the concept of honor is closely related to their religion, and that this is their justification for their crime. Now let's talk about the murder. Honor killing is actually quite a common practice in many cultures, often motivated by jealousy or anger towards a woman who has supposedly brought shame to a family member or social group that by committing such crimes as refusing to an arranged marriage or being involved in an affair. Honor killing is often a homicide of the woman involved, but can often be that of the man, such as the case of Santiago Nassar. The key thing about honor killing, however, is that it's often tolerated by the society it takes place in. This is where before men comes in. The members of the town were affected in the same way by the religious ideologies that the Vicario twins were. Just listen to what the mother of Pablo Vicario's fiancé says to the twins on the day of the murder. Pablo Vicario said, We're in a hurry now. I can imagine, my sons, she said. Honor doesn't wait. It's not completely clear in the book whether she knew about the murder or was just referring to the bishop's arrival. Either way, we can see that honor is a very big deal and Marquez was probably using this dialogue to convey that message. He does so more explicitly with the interview of Pablo's fiancé in the next paragraph. I knew what they were up to, she told me, and I didn't only agree. I never would have married him if he hadn't done what a man should do. This is actually quite frightening. Not only was this woman completely able to stop a murder and didn't, she would have gone as far as not to marry Pablo over it. She wasn't even involved with what motivated the twins to commit this crime, yet she made these statements. As you can see, the religious concept of honor has a large impact on the actions and opinions of characters in the story. One of the most interesting facts of the case is that 
Many of those who were on the docks knew that they were going to kill Santiago Nassar. This is what's ironic about honor killing, especially that which takes place in the story. They're so worried about seeming holy in the eyes of God, they go as far as to murder a man as a means of bringing honor to their family over the crime of sex before marriage. According to the Bible, however, killing people is on the top ten list of things not to do. If you take a look at the rest of that list, there's nothing that necessarily says sex before marriage isn't okay. It's barely mentioned in the Bible and subject to interpretation at that. Something else is behind this town's silence before the death foretold. They use their religion as an excuse. The town's culture picks and chooses which values of Christianity are important, and then uses their religion to justify these misguided values. This allows them to get away with perpetuating gender biases and double standards. Marquez makes it very clear. In their culture, women were expected to be virgins before marriage. While it was completely acceptable for a man to go to whorehouses, let alone have sex before marriage. When a woman doesn't meet this expectation, the rest of the society believes it is a great sin and uses it to justify a murder. Surely, though, the murder was deserving, even by the misguided interpretation of this town's religion. Right? Well, that's certainly not what Marquez leads us to believe. The narration frequently alludes to the fact that Angela lied about to whom she lost her virginity. Quote, She only took the time necessary to say the name. She looked for it in the shadows. She found it at first sight among the many, many easily confused names from this world and the other, and she nailed it to the wall with her well-aimed dart, like a butterfly with no will whose sentence has always been written. Santiago Nassar, she said. End quote. This suggests that Santiago Nassar was the victim of her accusation, made evident by the imagery used to describe her words. So, was this murder justified in any regard? After all, the Vicario twins didn't seem to have too many reservations about killing him, and not once did they ask Angela if she were sure. Nassar's innocence is perhaps most strongly conveyed in the report about his dead body. The report says, It looked like a stigma of the crucified Christ. Once again, look at the irony. Contrary to what the twins say of their innocence, Marquez is telling us that, in fact, it was Santiago who was innocent in the eyes of God. The town's cultural double standard against women and social tensions against Santiago are what did it. Religion was merely an institutionalized justification which legitimized what is ironically the most unholy act, the murder of an innocent man.